Hi everyone and welcome to your first Engineering 45 lab which is X-ray diffraction. Uh, again, a fairly complex uh, and a little bit obtuse concept for X-ray diffraction but hopefully this lab will kind of put things in perspective. So, first thing we need to do, turn on this chiller. Uh, turning on X-rays generates a lot of heat so this is the first step of kind of the process. So, we're going to turn that chiller on and then we're going to get everything cooled down. So it's going to make a little bit of noise so I'm going to talk even louder than I always usually talk. <laughs> so, next step, let's go ahead and put in our HV enable. So this is the key. We need to have this key enabled in order to, actually, let's go ahead and not do that yet. Um, so, we are going to enable, and turn on the kind of power here. So, next thing we are going to do, we're gonna take this key, and we are going to kind of put it in our HV enable. This enables, essentially, the output of our you know, x-rays and we're going to turn the power on green right here and right here you can see yellow the door is locked operational you can see some of these buttons flash now it's going to make this noise so this means that the door is HV enabled is fine don't worry Sorry. Let's see okay I can't stop the beeping uh, I forgot about that um, so as long as this light isn't on right here there's no x-ray being generated. But here, even though we have to fight against this beeping, we can kind of look at the components of the x-ray. So, right here, this is our x-ray generator. So, the x-rays are gonna be generated from this source right here. And they're gonna go out right here. And actually, I'm gonna grab a test sample. So, one of the things that I love about this uh, apparatus is the uh, safety features. So I've turned this off now, but you can see, I can't open this door now. The only way I can open this door is if I press this unlock. And now I'm unlock. The beeping commences again. Um, one of the things I don't like about this apparatus, though, is the um, sample stage. So here, our sample rotates. That's going to be an issue because if we don't pack our sample well, you could slide the material off. You will work with some x-ray uh, diffraction apparatuses where the generator will actually rotate. And your sample will stay constant and the generator rotates and does theta and also your two theta as well. So it's unfortunate. I wish we would have had that one because you can see some gunk here and you clean that up where the samples slid off a little bit. But uh, again, we're very fortunate. This is a great apparatus and most importantly, um, even though I love getting easy results um, <laughs> and not having to worry about packing the sample correctly, I'd much rather have these safety features because we don't want to uh, get irradiated. So, I've gone and got ahead and I've opened this MiniFlex guidance system uh, right here. So what I'm going to have to do, this apparatus has been off for quite a while, unfortunately, because of the pandemic. So I'm going to have to start it up. And I'm going to have to, this has been not used for, uh, not used for more than three weeks. So in order to kind of start my um, generator, my x-ray, you know, uh, generator, I'm going to have to kind of slowly start up because we don't want to kind of damage the x-ray. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and that's going to take a good while. So it's going to think about this and then it's probably going to take about a good 30 minutes for it to kind of start up again. So yeah, you can see it'll be a little bit longer <laughs> uh, as many things. So um, what I would instead say, or not instead, excuse me, but the other important thing, we need to have this key. But we also need to have this uh, ICSD, the International Crystallographic um, Structure Database. This is not a USB. Please do not take this USB drive. This single USB, what looks like a USB, is probably close to $50,000. It's, it's, it's very expensive. This allows us to look up the crystallographic structures in this international database. So it's going to allow us to kind of, when we run our experiment, detect and see what material that we're working with. And if we see something different than what we expect, we might have identified a new material. Maybe it's that model that the new top. Uh, anyways, so I'm going to go ahead and plug this in here, and then uh, we're going to do kind of sit and wait, or I'm going to sit and wait. You can do kind of whatever you want or move on to the next video. All right, I'll see you then. Hi, everyone. So we are going to uh, do our sample prep. Uh, we've just kind of got the XRD. It's running right now, or not running, but aging, as we kind of say, to get it back up and going. Uh, but now we're going to work and prep our samples uh, so that we can run it in. So the first sample that we're going to run is chromium powder. We're then going to run copper and then also 
uh, uh, basically uh, Hydens polyethylene glock, uh, excuse me, polyethylene glycol peg, and we're also going to run uh, polymethyl methacrylate (PMMA). PMMA is a amorphous polymer. Peg is a semicrystalline polymer. Uh, so we're going to see the difference uh, in that. So chromium powder, we're going to uh, start with that. That's a metal and copper as well. So let's go ahead and uh, look at our sample. So we are going to use our chromium powder. We are going to use our spatula here. And then you see here this glass, our sample slide here, right there. So the sample is just going to go right here. It's hard to kind of see this, but it's a, basically it's a little square indent. We're going to put it in there. And then finally, we have this other glass slide to kind of smooth out our surface. Why do we need a smooth surface? Well, if you have kind of roughness along your sample, when the x-ray hits and bounces off, we can kind of shift. So if there's large peaks, again, it's gonna deflect at some uh, other two theta angles that we're not, um, we're not sure, we're not getting basically a homogeneous sample. So if there's ridges and valleys, who knows at what's the real theta angle? So we need to make sure to do that. But first, before we do anything else, we are gonna take our ethylene glycol, or ethylene alcohol, 70%, we're gonna spray it and we're gonna clean all our materials. Why? Even though I know I cleaned it last time in lab, who knows if someone else, some unscrupulous character um, was running an experiment and uh, for, uh, heaven forbid if they didn't clean the samples. But seriously, you need to make sure to clean your samples uh, and, your, and all your materials before you start it because there's lots of inhomogeneous, especially for XRD, right? Because XRD, if we have some type of, you know, chemical inhomogeneity or some impurity, it could pop up in our you know, results and mess up our sample. We might think we have invented some new material, but instead we just <laughs> uh, messed up our results and we had some impurity from a poor sample prep. Who knows, it could be a piece of food, Reese's. They don't sponsor these videos, I wish they would. Give me some free Reese's. Uh, but anyways, as I small talk as I prep and clean out these samples. So, just make sure it's dry. Particularly, let's make sure that our sample slide is dry. And then finally, get this here. And just wipe this off. All right. So these are my Kim wipes. So what I'm going to do is just put a little bit. Here's my spatula. Just a little bit. This may be a little bit too much. Right directly on the slide. Yeah, not a little bit too much, but always cap afterwards. And I'm going to take this sample, excuse me here, and what I'm going to do, oops, I'm going to clean this up anyways afterwards. Let's bring it up. I'm just going to smooth it. Try to pack it, because again, I need to make sure I pack well. Why? Because if I don't pack it well, and there's gonna be some that fall off on the edge there. If I don't pack well, this material will fall off into my XRD, which I don't want to happen. Let's go ahead and scrape this off. Oops, a little bit messy, but it's okay. It's all gonna get packed, and we're gonna scrape it off and make it nice and clean. Watch as I do that. Pack it and pressing. Trying to make homogeneous as possible. And I'm just gonna scrape. Probably don't need to spend this much time, but just for effect. Again, I'm gonna clean this up very vigorously afterwards. Wipe off the edges as well to make it very pretty looking. There we go. And you could start to get a feel about when is it when is it flat enough. Now for me, if I was doing an experiment, I would say it's Definitely at this time flat enough, but for my students, I'm gonna make it very, very beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Should do it for research as well, but but I want. 
want you all to. I feel again horrible that you guys, you, everyone can't um, do this yourself. I know it's looks super fun from the video, but getting the hands-on experience is really unique. But there's gonna be opportunities. Even if you're a graduating senior, you can always come back to Pacific, and I'll rerun this lab if you've really, if you've got the itch, if you've got the XRD bug. All right. So I think this looks pretty good to me. I'm gonna wipe just to make our. Oops. I have to clean up one more time. Just make everything look okay. Just wiping off, just making it look pretty. That's all I'm doing here. Won't affect our results, but that's now for if you're writing a paper, you really need to make it clean for the aesthetics, for your production image, as my advisor used to say. Give me some production images. High quality ones, not the real ones, not the ones you did the experiments. I want to really high quality picture. That's very important for high impact journals. You need high impact images. That's why I feel like each, each engineering experimental group should have an artist. All right. So fantastic. Good enough. We've got our slides. Now let's go put this in the XRD. All right, everyone, so I've got my sample, so now I'm gonna go ahead and put it into our XRD. So let me just put some in here to remove it. So I'm just gonna put it right underneath those little clips. To kind of really kind of snug it in there. Let me rotate my hands for a second. So, all like this, you have to use a little bit of force. Right, and slide it in there. And we're good. Got my sample. Everything's okay. All right, it's beeping. This is on. This doesn't mean that uh, it's basically our X-ray B. Our we're energized. We're ready to go. But it is not activated yet. We could double check that here and look at look at your XRG power. Code is on, but it's not running yet. Two voltage. That's the setting. But okay, not in here yet. So let's go ahead and close. Turn that off. So, we are gonna go to general measurement, like this. Let's go ahead and name this file. We're gonna name it CR. Uh, we're gonna do spring 21. And then I'm gonna put this on the desktop. Save it. All right, we're gonna set our measurement conditions right here. So set measurement, sorry, let me show that one more time. So let me change the name. Sorry for that. I'm gonna set measurement conditions. I am going to go from three degrees to 120. We're gonna go at 10 degrees per minute. This is your speed setting. Um, if I was to do a production run, I would go at three degrees per minute. So the lower you go, the slower, the higher the resolution that you have. Um, but we wanna do, we're gonna do a quick scan because again, our time is limited in lab. But we're gonna have our voltage set at 40 kilovolts, our current at 50 milliamps. So, uh, those are our experimental settings for our general measurement. Press OK. And then now we're going to move into, excuse me, flip one more time, cover the mic, cover the camera like a pro. Uh, we have our ICD plugged in, and I'm going to go into execute. So it's thinking, doesn't want to cooperate. Will it let me run my experiment? Uh oh, there we go. All right. Today it's decided. I'm going to let my Engineering 45 students experience X-ray refraction. So, you can see it clicked. There was a click here. You unfortunately couldn't hear the noise. But now we're locked. It's on. And you can kind of start to see these are kind of your experimental settings. So it's setting up. Things are moving. There was that water flow. The shutter is open. When the shutter is open, that's when we're, again, exciting these X-rays. So we're getting into place. And again, we're gonna start at three degrees and then we're gonna go all the way to 120 degrees. So, okay, you see it starting to move. 
our shutters open. It's getting set up in three degrees, and then, and then, voila. So we're starting to see some data here. So that red is the live data settings. So we're looking again at a plot of, excuse me, intensity versus two theta degrees. So right now, it's pretty kind of noisy. Chromium is a metal, uh, and specifically chromium is a BCC metal, as opposed to copper, which is an FCC metal. Uh, we're going to deduce a lot of kind of very unique structural properties from this X-ray, um, XRD kind of plot, or XRD spectrum here. So I'm going to try to put it in view. So nothing's really happening right now, but from these, you know, we know that metals have short range order and long range orientational order, long range translational order. So we should expect to see some, like, basically delta peaks and nothing else, as opposed to polymers, which have short range order, but not much long range orientational or uh, translational order. So their peak should be much, much broader, and hopefully we'll see that. So, but I don't see my, my peaks yet. What's happening? Did I mistake, did I put polymers in my chromium sample? Don't put it past me. <laughs> I have been known to make mistakes every once in a while. Not often, but it happens. So nothing yet, nothing super exciting is happening. So what this is saying is that these, at these small angles, at these very, very large distances, we're not really picking up any characteristic or order in our structure yet. And remember, from the peaks, we're gonna be able to in, uh, determine and you're gonna actually have to calculate interplanar distances. And from um, basically where peaks occur and the Miller indices, What's the structure? Is it FCC? Is it BCC? And how can we confirm that using our structure factor equation for metals? And for polymers, it's all about qual uh, qualitative uh, in this lab. If you come with me to MEC202, we could get quantitative with polymers as well. But for polymers, if we have a uh, broad peaks, that means short range order. If we have some sharper peaks, there's more long range orientational order. But polymers can never be 100% crystalline, not like metals. So metals will always have sharper peaks, and we're gonna kind of show that, and you're gonna compare that in this lab. So nothing exciting yet, but I have, stay with me, I have a feeling something interesting is about to happen. Call it an intuition. Call it many years of running <laughs> XRD experiments. I'm going to stand up. I'm going to switch the legs, and I'm gonna squat down one more time. Usually this is the point in our lab sessions where the students are huddled around uh, the screen, bored, <laughs> waiting for something unique to happen, Professor Steimel letting them down once again. <laughs> but let's see. I wonder really, if it, is this a polymer? I could have made a mistake, like I said. Or who knows, maybe the XRD is acting up. This is the first official run since, unfortunately, the pandemic started, so. What could be happening here? Maybe there's just no, maybe this is a new variant of chromium that has no long range order. Let's see. What could be happening here? I'm not sure. Uh-oh, here we go. Uh-oh. There we are. Look at that peak. Extremely, extremely tall peak, extremely, extremely sharp peak. So what's that saying is everything to the left, some of that is noise, especially at the beginning, those like that first peak, probably near like three degrees, but we don't have any long range orientational order at, you know, below basically 43 or what, you know, where this peak is. And then now we might see some other peaks pop up. So I'm gonna end the video now. We'll check in when it's done. And we're back and this is the finished product. So as expected of a metal, we see these distinct sharp delta peaks at these various locations. So now let's go ahead and import this data and do some analysis. So what we're gonna do is open up another program here. So this is kind of our data processing program. Oops, excuse me not that integral calculation, 
instead, I'm going to click out, and we're going to open up Smart Lab Studio 2. And this is where we're going to use, where we're going to use that international, Crystal Graphic International database. So, waiting, intriguing, but again, you still have, even though we do this, we're, you're going to have the raw data to analyze. So, this is just to kind of give you a taste of um, how to utilize this program. So for the rest, we are not going to actually look at copper or uh, PEG or PMA because the process is essentially exactly similar for basically the analysis, putting in the machine, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But we will be taking this out and we will be cleaning as well. So I'm going to go ahead and load my data. So I'm going to load some data. So I want to click there and then hopefully it'll bring up a prompt and then I'm going to go to my desktop and I am going to look at I want to find my Chromium raw data file, spring 2021. Excellent. There's my peak evaluation. So you're going to get an Excel file here that's going to show you each peak that they identify, uh, and you're going to look at the first peak, the real, the first real peak we see here at 44. Look at it already calculates the distance and everything else, full width, half, maximum all the parameters that you're going to calculate yourself, but you'll be given that Excel file too. So this is the Excel file that you're gonna look at. But we also wanna kinda of see what's our phase identification. So let's go ahead and let's see what phase that are actually. We're gonna actually look and see if we can identify this material. So let's try to search just automatically. So everything. So let's just run it and see if we get anything. So it's running, it's looking through all the database, and it spits out something kind of crazy here. So there's some questions. So let's search again. It's getting thrown off by that noise. Sorry about that, we crashed. <laughs> One of the fun features of uh, doing live demos. So I'm gonna do my elements filter. I'm gonna do not include, and then I'm going to only include this guy. Now I wanna run, and what do you know? Now we're matching up. So you can see the peaks match up very well with the, again, quote unquote, real chromium. So you're gonna get the location of these peaks, and look at, it actually tells you already the crystallographic HKL indices of each of these peaks, the interplanar distances that they represent. So which planes, which interplanar distances? So, between your atoms. So we are going to now import this data. So this comes from the ICSV, uh, basically from our little data stick. Um, so that's gonna be given in a PDF for you to analyze. So you'll be given a PDF, you'll be given an Excel sheet. The Excel gives you your location of your peaks right here. And then uh, you're gonna match that with the PDF, which is the database. And then you'll also give, be given the raw data in a file to plot. So with that, go ahead and follow. Uh, we are done now. What I could do, actually I'll show you, just for fun. Uh, there. There's more fun stuff you could do with that uh, software. You could uh, analyze the percent crystallinity, and there's lots of actually things that you can do. But I'm going to try to pull. Nope, even though it's off, uh, it's not going to let me. I'm going to unlock my door. And after that, I'm going to turn off this guy and shut everything else down. So let me take out my sample. No spilling. What a great job. What a good day to end an experiment. Close it. Turn this off. I'm gonna go ahead and shut down here. So I'm gonna take this off. I'm going to exit this. I'm going to shut down and execute this. It's already off, so I can just close it out. Don't wanna save my sequence. And now I'm going to turn off the key. I like to put this away just because radiation scares, or not scares me, but I respect radiation and <laughs> it's immense power. So I'm gonna turn it off. I'm gonna turn the chiller off. Thank you, chiller. And I'm gonna put this back. And then I'm also going to remove any temptation to grab this guy, as in this is not uh, a thumb drive. So that's it, your first lab done. With the exception of now going and actually doing and writing your excellent journal article. But we're gonna do that together uh, and in your teams and uh, everything's going to work out great. So I will see you in the next video when we tackle DSC.
differential scanning calorimetry. And you can see you'll get some really funky curves again. And then we'll see you in Mechanics Lab and then in the Crojan Lab. All right, I'll see you next time. Thanks, bye.